Kyle Rittenhouse had the nerve, the temerity to act like a human being and an individual and say, somewhat jokingly and flippantly, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm writing in Ron Paul because Trump is just as bad on guns as Kamala. No more white people with opinions. I'm no longer allowing white people to have opinions. You've done it. You've ruined it. White people, you shouldn't make that Kamala Harris thing piece. And this is my last time going to be warning and explaining this to you. White people, I wasn't trying to scold you. I was trying to save you from yourselves. What a fun scam we've created where I can comment on all things white, I being him, right? Him, the black man, can comment on all things white from a teaching perspective, from a hierarchical perspective. But if the white person dare comment on anything black, I have to protect you from yourself, bro. You're gonna get dragged. But if they actually cared about the lower class, if these commies actually cared, they wouldn't want more taxes. They wouldn't advocate for more taxes. They wouldn't advocate for more government. Why are we taxing the lowest wage earners anyway? The American left is a bigger threat to you, your rights, and your sovereignty than the American right. It's a big club and you ain't in it. Everyone's a victim! It's Friday, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. It's four o'clock on Friday. If you are still at work, what are you doing? Get out. Get out. Leave. Leave the wage slavery behind. Go. It is the weekend. Enjoy it. Why are we still working 40 hours a week? Can anybody tell me? Why are we working 40 hours a week, people? We've been working 40 hours a week for how long? You're telling me that you're not more productive now? What is the productivity increase? for you today compared to you of a hundred years ago. If you were working on the docks with your hands, you could probably unload one ship, maybe. You and 30 other longshoremen, one ship in a day. Now, thanks to the wonders of technology, you are unloading how many ships? Hey, longshoremen, help me, what are you doing? 10, 20 ships a day? Are you getting 10 to 20 times more money? Oh, man, Gerard sounds like a communist today. Power to the people. No, the communists do not have a monopoly on public good. That's what they'd like you to think. They'd like you to think that communists are the only people. No, 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 no. Communists, communism is just a religion for lazy narcissist losers to come together in one agreement that we hate our father and we would rather gaslight the desperate, the desperate people into believing that pooling tips will revolutionize the future. Pooling tips will revolutionize the world. They act like they're the smartest people on earth. They buy themselves some Warby Parkers. They got like a, they always have like some like, some dumb little mustache or or like one of those goatees that don't come together in the middle like Trotsky, always with a furrowed brow and a condescending tone. You wouldn't understand it. It's too complex for you. People just, what is, that's always my, my favorite thing with the communists is like, what's communism? Like they ask you to define it. It's pooling tips. It's taking the money from productive people and giving it to the unproductive people for them to spend as they see fit. A hundred million dollars in Elon Musk's hands is better spent than a hundred million dollars at the hands of an AOC, a Kamala Harris, Kamala, Kamala Harris, what, Kamala. Every time I say her name, somebody wants to yell at me for saying it wrong. Bollywood Harris is not going to spend the money better more efficiently in a way that benefits all of us better than Elon Musk would. Just not. And if Elon Musk spends the money poorly, you punish him. You don't buy his stuff. You sell his stock. There's consequences. If someone like Pete Buttigieg doesn't spend the transportation money properly and destroys domestic air travel in the United States, makes it three times as expensive as it was before he became the transportation czar, before he took off nine months to breastfeed his, his adopted baby. He gets to run for vice president. He gets promoted. 
See, that is right there the big difference between capitalism and communism. The big difference between the free market and the socialist. It's choice. Now, the argument is, do we really have capitalism right now? Do we really have a free market? I don't think we do. We have some kind of bastardization. We have corporatism. We have a, a slow neo-fascism. Weird amalgamation of faux choice. We saw that with GameStop. When the hedge funds make a bet and they lose, the market shuts down. Janet Yellen and the SEC investigate and slap on the wrist. Right? When Martha Stewart sells her stocks because she has inside information, she goes to jail. When Nancy Pelosi puts calls in because she has inside information, she becomes Speaker of the House. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. I like accountability, and I like choice. Do I like corporations? Do I think corporations? Do I think giant multi-international global corporations like Pfizer and BlackRock are, are good? Inherently, no, but they're just people, just like governments. They're, they're, it's just people. But at least, although less and less, we can hold Pfizer accountable. You do not have to consume a Pfizer product. You can short Pfizer stock. You do not have to participate in Pfizer. You hate Nike's global practices. I get it. Nike is disgusting to me. I hate Nike. You will almost never see me wearing Nikes. I, I own one Nike product. One. The Rafa tennis shoes because they are the best for pickleball. Fair enough. They're the best. Credit where it's due. The Rafa tennis shoes are the best for pickleball. And I was losing my big toenails <laughs> playing in my Pumas. But I don't want to be lectured by a company that uses slave labor on social justice. A company that supports LeBron James, who uses his platform wearing the United States uniform. We let LeBron James, a man who has knelt for the national anthem, be a torchbearer at the, at the Olympics. He sits there and he celebrates Simone Biles' black greatness. Not American greatness. Black greatness. Cringy. Have it. Have it. Have it. Good for you guys. We have to clap for you. Every day. Every day in America we have to wake up and say, oh, I hope black people are having a better day. We wake up and take a knee and we do our hair. <laughs> we wake up, we take a knee, we do our Hail Collins, right? Hail Collin, full of shit, hollowed be thy knee. <laughs> They're divisive in every way that they possibly can be. They sit there on high and they lecture you. The middle class person just trying to get by on the ills of capitalism while they sell you a shoe for 200 bucks that was made by a child in a Uyghur work camp for $2. And then you have to get lectured by LeBron James, a man who has been a millionaire since he was 16 years old. A man who, by nothing but the gifts of God, was born six foot eight and 250 pounds. It's gonna lecture you on your privilege. Yeah, I don't wanna buy Nike. And thankfully, I don't have to. That is the difference, right? If they take your money and you don't want your money going to Israel, you don't want your money going to Ukraine, what recourse do you have? That is the difference. That's the difference. Our Constitution and our founding fathers knew that power attracts the worst and corrupts the best. They saw this moment in time. A republic, if you can keep it. So they made all of the laws about limiting government power. We're allowed to talk whatever shit we want, first law. Second law, if you don't like it, do something about it. 
First Amendment, Second Amendment. They knew. And what are the two things this government has under attack more than anything else? Speech and the ability to protect that speech. Even Trump. Even Trump. Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse had the nerve, the temerity to act like a human being and an individual last night and say, somewhat jokingly and flippantly, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm writing in Ron Paul because Trump is just as bad on guns as Kamala. So what did the right wing do? Attacked him. Canceled him. Went after him like he was a union scab. Did everything to Kyle Rittenhouse that the left does daily. Yet another reminder. I've been saying this for 10 years. But yet another reminder, if you're just opening your eyes to it now, that there are no good guys in the culture war. There are only lesser evils. We align ourselves with the right and MAGA for now because the left is pure evil. And it is. I believe that. If the left wins, they are a bigger threat to you and your well-being, your future, and your rights than the right. I wish there wasn't a dichotomy. I wish it wasn't just these two choices. But right now, in 2024, August of 2024, 90 days before the election, the American left is a bigger threat to you, your rights, and your sovereignty than the American right. That does not make the American right good. It makes it less bad. Kyle Rittenhouse is yet another example of that. Once, God willing, universe willing, Allah, uh, Zoroaster, Buddha willing, I tell you, we need all of them. We need them all to come together and, and like, like, you know, uh, like uh, Captain Planet. We need Captain Religion. We need Allah on our side. We need Buddha on our side. We need uh, Jesus on our side. Uh, you know, we, we, we need George Floyd, the ghost of George Floyd on our side. All, all the martyrs, the, 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 the gods and, and the, the angels and the saints. We need them all on our side to beat back this global left. But I promise you, if we are somehow, if we are somehow able to beat them back, that hard right's going to be a problem. But that's a problem for tomorrow. We need to get rid of the problem in front of us today. canceling Kyle Rittenhouse. We defended you. He was right. <laughs> he was right. Royce Lopez from Revenge of the Sis had a great line on Twitter. He's like, hey, look, even if you hate Kyle Rittenhouse, he still took out two Kamala Harris voters, so, you know, you're still up one. <laughs> Brutal. But true. Wow. Chat looks like it's going crazy, Skyler. Let's rock and roll. Yeah, so um, TJ says Kabbalah Harris. Kabbalah, yeah, the Kabbalah. Ka Kamila Harris, Kamila. Jake says, greetings from Asia. Hey, what's going on in Asia, man? That's cool. What time is it, like 1 o'clock in the morning there? Good for you, man. <laughs> what part, uh, wait, wait, what part of Asia? Asia's huge. Are we talking like Thailand, Asia? Are we talking like mainland China? There's no way you're watching this in mainland China. You in Japan? Where you at? Talk to me. Dude, there's a ton of comments. Read them all. As we're Skyler, waiting, as we're waiting, um, he he uh, proceeds to say, uh, "Please uh, smash the like button, folks." Uh, Kamala for pretend black woman of the year. Gerard spitting fire as usual. What's up, boys? One thousand percent. The left is evil. Period. Mm -hmm. uh, Common Logic seventy one says yes because if you get rid of them. They take away the Constitution. Nobody remembers what Trump supported in 2018, starting with bump stock bans, red flag laws. Dan Holloway made a short video about it. Very fantastic. And Jake is in Thailand. Jake is in Thailand. Watch out for them lady boys. Or, you know, don't. You know, have fun. Live your life however you want. Go for it. One of my favorite videos of all time uh, is somebody went to Thailand and they showed a video to a lady boy of, like, an American trans woman. Right, and they just started giggling, laughing. They were like, "Oh, it's like he's not even trying at all." <laughs> I was like, "That is, that is smoke. That is shade." <laughs> if you're watching on Facebook and leaving comments, I, I, uh, I got DMs uh, from Cheryl uh, yesterday that, "Hey, Skylar, how come we didn't, 
read any of my comments on air, and then I'm looking at her comments, and I don't know if you're getting the Facebook comments. So if you're commenting, uh, let Skylar know where you're commenting from so we can try to perfect this. You know, If, if all these comments are coming from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, we want to know where they're coming from. We're, we're going through Restream. IO and it's the best of a bad situation outside of like having six different producers going live from six different cameras, which I can't afford. I can only afford Skyler barely, but a little bit donations help so he can feed himself. I have to give a huge shout out to all of you. I reached, um, no, I didn't. We reached an accomplishment, a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Which is really remarkable, and I cannot thank you guys enough. If it wasn't for you, I'd have quit and I'd have gone insane by now. A uh, hundred thousand followers on Instagram, despite every effort they could do, they've taken me down for months at a time. They've demonetized me. They have it so that my content doesn't show up in the feed. That means you folks, you awesome people, have been liking, sharing, commenting, spreading this. Uh, this, this live stream that we do to try to make sense of this world and people are watching and people are liking it. And I have you to thank for that. You guys did this. It's yours more than it is mine. Sagar, Don Sill, Raul, guys that edit the videos, put out the videos, Jossie, when she was here, Christian Perello, Skyler, everybody that that's helped do this. Obviously Mickey Gall, Candice, Horback, Eva Lovia, obviously, uh, you know, Carolyn Miljavic, who I tour with, Dave Landau, who's let me on the show with Normal World. Let me be a part of that. Let me be on a couple of his shows and the Drinking Bros, you know, just countless amounts of people. I have to thank for that. And we're only getting started, folks. And I cannot thank you enough. I cannot thank you enough. They have tried everything they can to silence us, and you just won't let them. And that inspires me. You guys inspire me. So we'll continue to talk that shit just for you guys. Really, really appreciate it. Brutal day in the market. If you want the honest opinion, JMO, I'm almost 8%. Uh, do I look 8% thinner? Because I have 8% less money than, than I had before two days ago. The last two days in the market have been absolutely awful. Uh, I still have hope that crypto hasn't been completely infiltrated, although I do think it has been infiltrated. Uh, and that the fall could be, you know, corrective in a positive manner. But the truth is, our economy is in shambles. They have been lying to us. They have been telling us, this is the best economy ever! Where it's an inflationary bubble, the likes of which we've never seen. It makes, if you look at the numbers, the underlying numbers make 2008 look like a pimple. This is a, a bubble. Nobody's buying houses. Commercial real estate foreclosures are up over 1,000%. While nobody can afford houses, our government prints money and gives it to migrants to come in. Now, when migrants come in, right, I'm not anti-migrant. When migrants come in, though, it is a massive effect on the lower, lower middle class and lower income communities. They come in, they drain resources. They don't pay into taxes. They work off the books. They don't have any, any ability to pay taxes if they wanted outside of sales tax, which also goes to show me my more and more, I don't think there should be any taxes outside of sales tax. I think sales tax should be the only, you want a progressive tax, sales tax. There it is. Boom. 10% across the board, right? 5% state, 5% federal on everything purchased. Things will be more expensive, but you'll have so much more money. Right, is, isn't, the, isn't it weird, guys, that every time they want to do something for the poor, it's always mathematically insane, right? Like, let's say they want to raise the minimum wage to 20 bucks, okay? Now, I'm a business owner. I make $100 an hour, okay? With that $100 an hour... I am able to afford, uh, let's say, eight employees at $10 an hour. And then 10 of those dollars goes to paying the bills, and then 10 of those dollars goes to me because I got to make money doing this. Okay. Now it goes to $20 an hour. 
I still need the ten dollars to pay the bills, and I still need to make money doing this. So twenty dollars out out the out the window. Now I have eighty dollars left. Instead of eight employees, how many employees can I afford? Four. Okay. So magically, magically, I'm supposed to double the amount of money I have to pay these people. Well, I don't. So I have to fire four people. But for those other four people, it's really, really good, right? It's really good because they double their money. Sure. Okay. Now, this is the part of it they don't ever get to in their stump speeches or their, tw- or their TikTok videos. How much more money do I have to pay in payroll tax? Twice as much money in payroll tax. So if my payroll tax is now twice as expensive as it was, can I actually afford all four of those employees? No, I can't. I can really only afford three of them. Hmm, Okay, well, at least three of those employees. Remember, I employed eight people. Now I employ three. But the government's getting more money per employee in taxes, so the government's happy. So there's three people where there used to be eight. Is my business going to be able to stay open? Are those three people going to make up the productivity of those eight? Probably not. Because they're still low-wage workers. Still kids, you know, migrants, people don't speak English. So my business probably is not going to be able to stay afloat. I'm going to close it. Just leave well enough alone. So now it's not eight employees to three employees. It's eight employees to zero employees. But then does that mean that people don't want my burgers anymore, my burger shop? No. Burger Conglomerate USA comes in, and they're going to take over my shop. How many employees do they have? Oh, it's all robots. Because the middle class guy who just owns a burger shop can't afford those $100,000 robots. Can't afford to lose for two or three years to hollow out the marketplace. So they really just replaced me the small business owner who doesn't vote for big government. Are you starting to see how this works? Now let's take it the other way. Okay, you want low-wage workers to make more money. Who doesn't? Okay. Why not instead of giving people a $10 raise, which, by the way, $20 after taxes is what? About 15 bucks, right? Okay. 15 bucks. So why don't we give people no raise? And just zero tax rate them. So now all of a sudden, the $10 that used to be $8 now becomes $10. That's a $2 raise for everybody without taking any money out of the business owner's pocket. So now all eight employees get to stay. I get to keep my business. Everybody gets a 20%, 25% increase in their salary. Not nothing. Everybody walks around with 25% more dollars in their pocket to spend. But who loses there? Government loses. Government don't get their 25%. And government donors, big corporations lose. Because they don't get to bully the small business out of the marketplace. Do you understand how that works, folks? It's very, very important. I don't, I'm not sure I did a good job of explaining that. Maybe that was convoluted. But if they actually cared about the lower class, if these commies actually cared, they wouldn't want more taxes. They wouldn't advocate for more taxes. They wouldn't advocate for more government. Why are we taxing the lowest wage earners anyway? Why are we taxing unemployment Why are we taxing Social Security? That's money that's already been taxed. They're taxing money again. Capital gains. You get the money, it's taxed. You put it into an investment account. The investment account grows. They tax you. But if the investment account falls, what happens? Do I I get that money back? Is it like an insurance? (laughs) Nope. Sucks to be you, bruh. (sighs) It's a big club and you ain't in it. They don't want people to know how these things work. When anybody explains how these things work, their bots swarm and attack and be like, you're a liar, you're smooth brain, you don't know how anything works. They never explain how you're wrong. They just say that you're wrong over and over and over and over. So then people that don't know look in the comments and go, oh, well, he must be wrong. The big lie has never been easier. Propaganda has never been easier when they could just throw a thousand AI bots into something and you're some 16-year-old kids looking at this going, oh, I guess he is wrong. 
But Javier Malay is proving <laughs> is proving differently. Javier Malay says when you turn off the money spigot, inflation goes down. Jake is in Asia right now. They're definitely lying. America's economy is crashing. Crashing. Asia is kicking our ass, and I don't just mean Japan. No, it, it, it is. Um, and, and, and Russia. Russia, whose economy has been in shambles since the fall of the USSR. We put an embargo on them, and we destroyed our own dollar. We have morons running our government. We have absolute morons. One of my favorite things is they talk about how good ESG is, but then ESG is so unpopular that they have to change the words, the letters to DEI. It's the same thing. Social justice became unpopular and it became ESG. ESG became so unpopular they changed it to DEI. Nobody knows that these are all the same things. These are the same things. Different acronyms. And DEI... They love DEI, they want DEI, but then when you call somebody a DEI hire, they're like, how dare you? How, how dare you say she's a DEI? The White House said that Kamala was selected as vice president to show their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. But then when you call her a DEI hire, they're like, how dare you? You would never say such a thing if she wasn't a proud black woman. I love the way that these folks say black. That was black magic. This is my black job. It's, like, it's so obnoxious. <laughs> they really think they're special. And I guess, look, maybe this is maybe this is the Hegelian dialectic, man. Maybe this is like the grandkids. They're the rich kids of the struggle, right? Like there's always when what are the, what's the old saying with the rich dad? You know, the rich dad gives his son everything he never had, so the son becomes everything he never was. We're saying that with the black community. And they get so angry when I say this. There's a kid on TikTok specifically. What's this guy's name? He's in Brooklyn and he just spends his day with him and his like 500,000 followers just just bullying white people with a smile on his face. And he loves, you can tell he loves so much when liberals, especially liberal white men, are like, oh my God, you're so right. His name's like Destiny Christian or something like that. Christian Divine with a Y. Christian Divine. Christian Divine, he, him, with a World of Warcraft avatar. Avatar, forgive me. I, I don't know what's going on with my tongue recently, folks. 588,000 followers. 30, Brooklyn, actor, lighting. I wonder which one he gets more work in. <laughs> one must imagine Christian happy. All right. Stocks, institutional market manipulation is uncoordinated because it Im it's implied and is the same stuff we'd go to prison over. 100%. And now, Insane. And, and, and we, can't, we can't keep up because of... We don't have access to the technology that they have access to. They can, you know, they have AI bot farms that are trading in the one one millionth of a cent a hundred times a second. They're moving. They're, they're, they're actively manipulating the stock in the direction that they want. Um, even, even the way the stock market works has changed. You know, when they're like, oh, uh, well, the Bitcoin ETF didn't, you know, when it got approved, the price didn't skyrocket because it was already baked into the price. It's like, that doesn't sound right. How can somebody buy 7 billion units of something the way BlackRock did with the Bitcoin ETF and the price not go up? How, that, that just doesn't make any sense. Well, the price was baked into it. I don't think it was. That's, that's not what the charts say. Don't believe your lying eyes, though. It's, it, it, there's there's fuckery afoot. We feel it. We sense it. It's our instincts. Man, we're getting gaslit. We're getting gaslit to death. And you just have to constantly be like, well, I guess not, you know? I guess I'm wrong about this. Also, let's give it 90 days before I'm proven right again. Right? Every time we're we're every time they, the media and, and they, yell at us and they get their lemmings to yell at us, what idiots we are, you can set your clock on it. All right, let's check back in 90 days. Oh, I was right. Oh, weird. But you don't want to talk about that anymore? That's old news. Moving on. Ha, weird. Feels like that happens all the time. Hey, remember that thing that you 
yelled at me, called me a moron about. Turns out I was right. Oh, uh, where are you going? You don't want to talk about that? That's old news? Weird. Weird. Gold is up. It's like, you know, everything they tell you, like gold is up. The money printer. When gold is up, that means that they think the money printer is going to go. Brrr. So that, that means that in order to make the Democrats look better, you know, not by the way, congrats to Kamala. She was elected <laughs> by a virtual vote of delegates. <laughs> She was elected the nominee for the Democratic Party. Give it up for her. We have, we have an applause button, don't we? We have an applause button? <laughs> oh. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Give it up for her. In a win for democracy, Kamala Harris gets um, 3,000 delegates to virtually vote for her. <laughs> It's like in Venture Bros, where it's like just these 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 six silhouettes on a video screen. <laughs> you will be the delegate. <laughs> the sovereign has spoken. <laughs> Saving democracy. Oh man, you know, I just maybe this is good, man. Maybe this is a good thing on a Friday. You know, like we've been waiting for this. Maybe, maybe we just need this thing to crumble. Like Maybe, maybe we're not, look at you, you know, you're six foot two, 220 pounds. You are an all state football player. Are you meant to sit behind a desk? Are you meant to get yelled at by some 56 year old, 135 pound chain smoker because you were five minutes late today? No, you were meant to have a broad sword, get onto a a 20-foot wooden boat and sail to the middle of the freaking ocean. And wherever you land, take that bitch over. That's what you were meant to do. Maybe we need this thing to crumble. Let them have it. Maybe we just need to go back to being pirates and outlaws and Vikings. Fuck these people. Fuck their society. Fuck woke. Fuck PC. Fuck these garbage Olympics. Fuck mainstream media this government let it crumble and then let's just get 10 20 of us together throw on some helmets and go a raiding check out of this society let them eat cake let them have it all and then let's take it from them and then give it to our people let them have as much of it as they want. Let these nerds and these geeks in the internet have it all. Take as much as you want. Silence everybody. Censor everybody. So when we take it from you, nobody will listen to you when you're telling them it's happening. Oh, oh new fantasy unlocked. New fantasy achieved. 21st century Vikings. They think they own you. You feel it deep inside you. You and your people, you're a conqueror. You have to listen to the, to the ancestors of losers call you a colonist. Admit your privilege. <laughs> you are the ant. You... You have the blood of conquerors inside of you. How do you think Ragnar Ragnarsson would have handled if one of those one of those sissy little priests came up to him wearing Warby Parkers and an I'm with her shirt? <laughs> Admit your privilege. <laughs> Are we allowed to have pride in that or no? No. Only the people allowed to be proud are the black people. And I like black people. I really do. But these types of black people, these I'm special, I'm better than you, I deserve special treatment types, these nerds, 
Do we have to give them the special treatment? No more white people with opinions. I'm no longer allowing white people to have opinions. You've done it. You've ruined it. White people, you shouldn't make that Kamala Harris thing piece. And this is my last time going to be warning and explaining this to you. White people, I wasn't trying to scold you. I was trying to save you from yourselves. Ah. I think that everyone has their own beliefs and their own personal opinions. I do not believe that all humans are part of a hive mind. Hello, man in a sweater sleeve. Let me explain this to you in a surprisingly nice way. I stopped making content Aww. explaining race to white people in like 2021 because I was like, why am I why am I doing this? They can either figure it out or not if they care. The point of those videos wasn't that I think that white people are a hive mind. It was that a bunch of white creators were getting on here making videos about Kamala Harris, but then also saying something kind of racist Aww. and then immediately getting like fucking dragged for it. I saw it happen to like five different creators. Not five! And then I was like... Hey guys, <laughs> until you can figure it out, stop. Because Black saviors here! I exist in the leftist sphere, and in the leftist sphere, Kamala Harris is not particularly well liked for a variety I of reasons. I exist in but the But as leftist they were trying sphere. to get out their critiques, they couldn't find ways to either not use black people as ammo or say something racially charged about her and her history with police. It was like this- Racially this, charged? was the problem. But here's the What's bit, not right? racially charged this in 2024? People, a particular type of people get so sensitive whenever you say white people don't or white people this. They'll always tend to go, yeah, what if I said black people would, would are supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. Hi, that is what black people experience their whole lives. No, is um, it? it, it is it? That, that's just like a Tuesday. I got yeah. videos stitching me being like, I thought you were supposed to judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. You guys at some point have to realize that Dr. King was saying that because they were blowing up churches yeah. and murdering children. Who's they? Uh, Democrats, Because people right? wanted Democrats? to eat at the same restaurants. Yeah, Dr. Democrats. King wasn't sitting around watching someone be like, white people be like, and he was like, no, yeah, no, no, no. For most white people, unless you're in the community of hooded sheets, uh, you're never really thinking of your identity in relation to your race. From a very young you age, only black, think of that because that's all you have to offer. Having to understand what it means to be black. Being blind yeah. to this as a black person is an unsafe way to live life. White of course. Really able to stop and think about what it means to be white. Ah. And not like Italian or German <laughs> or something like white. What is what even is that? Yeah. It's like made up, right? It but is. it exists as a category. Mm -hmm. Like a hierarchy you know yeah. this nation for you to exploit on a racial caste system what's funny is i'm currently reading this book the rise and fall of the american Whig party it's a thick-ass book i regret buying but it's actually a good read it's it's just long as shit. However, in the preface, the white author says this. Some demographic groups are largely missing from its pages because African Americans were disenfranchised in all but a few northern states and because the political activists about whom I have evidence were exclusively white, black voices are not heard here. Where possible, I draw heavily on the letters of Whig politicians from their wives, whose partisan zeal I appreciate and whose political acumen I deeply admire, none more so than Emily Baldwin, the wife of Connecticut's groveling. Whig Senator. All right, that's Roger enough. I've Sturm had enough. Baldwin, I've had enough of the groveling. Been groveling. Do you think Christian Devine has even once read black, redneck, white, liberal? I got to give him credit for one thing. He says, I exist in the leftist space. And you can tell through his condescension, his condescending tone, and his almost giggling smile that he knows that he's playing a game. He knows that what a fun game this is. What a fun scam we've created where I can comment on all things white, I being him, right? Him, the black man, can comment on all things white from a teaching perspective, from a hierarchical perspective. But if the white person dare comment on anything black, I have to protect you from yourself, bro. You're going to get dragged. Just try I saw like five people have an opinion, and it did not work out for them, bruh. You have the freedom to your opinion. People like me who disagree with you still believe you have the freedom to your opinion. However, from somebody that's lived and worked in Brooklyn, you don't give people who disagree with you the grace to their opinion. You ostracize. You gang. Gang up on. Really one-on-one -on -one and in person. This is why I really hate you pussies. Because one-on-one -on -one and in person, you'll have a conversation and admit a lot of this is bullshit. It's happened oh, how many countless times. But then when you get in groups, oh, I believe you call it code switching. 
just admit you like special treatment like that more than anything else. Just admit you like being able to say things like I can talk about this. You can't because if you just were honest, if you just said, I can talk about this, you can't 90, 90 poo poo. People would be like, what's wrong with this guy? But then you have to throw out some sort of pseudo intellectualism. Like you've never considered what it was like to have the black experience. No, I haven't. Despite the fact that, you know, we are all supposed to wake up every morning in 2024 America. And before we brush our teeth, think about 10 ways to make a black person's life better. Not a Spanish person, not a Latinx, not an Indian, not a Pakistani, not an Asian American, just black America. Have we ever even considered the experience of the black American? How we considered how every rule for the last 20 years has been put in place to somehow better their life. Can't get into college? Well, let's kick out the Asians to make room for you. <laughs> Can't pass the civil service tests? Ah, lower the standards, but for them only. Now you're hearing this saying, this guy's racist. I'm just stating facts. Facts can't be racist or not. They're just facts. I'm kind of sick of it. I don't know if you could tell. I'm sick of it because I don't look at you as less than me. That's the truth of it. I don't see you as beneath me, so I don't see you as needing my help. That's the impasse I have with this whole movement. White progressives act like they have your back because they, oh my God, you're so right, Christian. But you don't understand, Christian, that makes them feel like they're above you. You need their validation. They think by telling you, see, do you understand how this hierarchy works? You're grinning because you get to look at me in a condescending way and say, no, 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 white creator, you can't talk about it. I'm just trying to help you, buddy. I'm just trying to help you, friend. You can't talk about that. But I'm sitting here trying to help you going, bro, look at what Malcolm X said about the white liberal. They think they are above you, that you need their validation. They may be in the comments yelling at me, the evil white guy, but they're doing that because they think you are weak and that they need to defend you from me. I don't see you that way. I see you as my equal who doesn't need their validation. Those f***ing losers. Why would you want their validation to begin with? Outside of the whole, there's definitely some sort of like weird subdom sexual thing between the, the black progressive community and the white progressive community, like you're a colonizer. Oh, was I, have I been a bad colonizer, Dally? You've been a bad little colonizer. You need to be punished. Do I need to be punished, daddy? Oh, punish me. Weird sexual thing between black progressives and white progressives. It's very Don Lemony, right? Don Lemon, Kamala Harris, AOC, right? They, they, white men are evil, marry white men weird right it's a little weird it's kind of weird so it's a fun little game you guys get to play with each other I, I don't I don't like the game so I don't play it see I sit here and say you have the right to have an opinion about white creators and whether you like it or not I'm gonna have a, an opinion about black folks sorry sorry nothing you could do about it even better you gonna cancel me you gonna you gonna cancel me harder daddy <laughs> See, I don't play that game. Raul Minan says, a big question. At what point would you consider leaving America? How bad things have to be? Ah, oh, man, what a great question. I go 50-50 on that, man. Fight or flight's a big, big question I, I think about all the time. It's a very, very, very good question. I think, like, man, half of me goes, F it. You know what I mean? Like, what am I even doing this for? I can go down to Columbia and live like a king yeah. with the money I have already. Like, why do I care? Let them have it. And then the other side of me says, man, like, how selfish and irresponsible is that? If not you, then who else? You know, like, part of me is like, well, my family left Ireland, you know? Like, and then my family left Brooklyn, went to Jersey. I left, Jer I left Jersey, came to Florida. Like, maybe there's a natural progression of things. 
But then I know it's a global thing. They'll never leave you alone. I, I go back and forth. I really do go back and forth. I, I go back and forth between planting my flag and going all in and just being like, have it. I, I don't care. I, 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 it depends on the day. On Monday, I feel one way. On Tuesday, I feel another. What a great question. I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, I, yeah. Sometimes it just feels like too big of a hill to climb. It really does. Um, and other times it just feels like you have a responsibility. If you, if you can see it when other people can't see it, you have a responsibility to see it through to the end. I, I don't. That's such a great question, and I really don't have an answer. I really don't. That's, it really is. It's a great question. I, I wish I had the money and the resources to go all in on fighting it because I think this is an evil that needs to be fought. But then also, I feel like just move to Columbia, get yourself a beautiful woman, have a couple kids, and just, you know, pass on the knowledge of freedom and liberty and, you know, wait this thing out. I, I don't know. What well, You know, again, it's a great question. But I do think about it often. I really do. Uh, congrats on the 100K on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That means a lot. It really means a lot. Koala Harris is up in the prediction market. <laughs> I know. I see. I, I called it two weeks ago. I made a video that, you know, they were going to wag the dog. Kamala was going to come out and the media was going to go all in on flexing. This is such an ego thing for the media. The media are looking at this licking their chops going, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. This is our biggest challenge yet. Can we take somebody that only 2% of Democrats even liked four years ago and just force her into the White House? Yeah. Heck, yeah. This is our challenge, and we're up to it. This is them flexing. This is, this is their Super Bowl. And sure enough, the polls are showing she's – up two points in like all of the all of the battleground states. The, she's up in Pennsylvania. She's up in Michigan. She's up in Wisconsin. She hasn't even put up what her policy positions are on her website, but she's up. Yeah, okay, uh, guys, the fix is in. All right, <laughs> like it. It just is. They all they have to do is make it somewhat convincing to the the general public of useful idiots that she is riding this unbelievable wave of popularity to this remarkable comeback, right? Like, if they can just make it plausible to the 80-year-olds the, the who watch MSNBC, then they'll, the, you know, it'll fall on deaf ears when we start screaming that, that it was rigged again. By the way, did you see how they rigged it in Venezuela exactly the same way <laughs> That the 2020 election went exactly, exactly the same way? If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Well, as soon as we're going to finish this live stream in five minutes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get off and Google it. Look at Wisconsin 2020. Look at Pennsylvania 2020. Look at Michigan 2020. They stopped the polling for whatever reason. A pipe burst. There was a, they found boxes, boxes of ballots. And 900,000 votes went to one candidate, not the other. And everybody's just like, oh, okay, yeah, no, this is normal. <laughs> Venezuela did the same thing. Our voting mimics Venezuela's voting now. That's all you need to know about the process. That's all you need to know about how much you should trust this process. All they've got to do, all the media has to do is get it close enough that it's somewhat plausible. The deep state will take it from there. Go ahead, Scott. All right. So uh, Scott Brennan says, I'm in for the uh, 21st century Vikings. Just need the ship. My man, <clears throat> we need you, Scott. You're the guy we need. We, you're the first berserker off the boat, 100%. Going to be yelled at by someone, especially you and your business. Big, strong, smart, strong, as, as you know, the athlete that you are, the man that you are, the family that you have. You're going to get yelled at by some <laughs> by some 45-year-old single cat lady vice president, vice principal? No, 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 no. You were meant for more than that, my friend. You were meant for better than that. We all were. Brett Patterson says, uh, we have Big Macs in our blood. <laughs> we got battle axes in our blood. Oh, I, sometimes I feel yeah. like, like um, sometimes I feel, you, you ever been to like one of those battleship museums where it's a battleship? And it's just like anchored at a dock. Now it's for like little little kids to walk by and take pictures of you. Like I feel like a battleship. Yeah, that's I've just seen those. 
I'm a battleship that's in a world of drones. You know, like, man, in my day, put drop me, fat and old as I am, drop me into the Battle of Hastings and see what I do. Take this body right here, fast, strong. Kevlar? <laughs> body armored? And watch what I do in the 15th century. Watch what I do in the 9th century. This right here, this was, this was a medieval Ferrari. And now I'm living in a, in a world of Teslas. Brutal. Yeah, so Jake has a lot to say about he called me Urkel, then he called Christian <laughs> Urkel, and then he fucked up his own joke somehow. And somewhere in the mix, Luke oh, himself said wait, he wait, made wait. it. Skyler, Skyler's throwing some jabs out here. You don't get to call <laughs> Skyler. You don't get to call Skyler Urkel without him jabbing back. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Boom, boom, give me a give me a boom, boom. There we go. You don't get to call him Urkel. He's he's on the mic throwing hands. All right, so another big question from Raul is, uh, at, what po at what point would you consider leaving America? In which, why would he ask that again? I don't know, but I um, answered it before. I, th I think about yeah. it often. So um, your top three countries would include probably Colombia and what other two? Uh, I don't know if I would ever, if I left America, I don't know if I would ever put down roots anywhere else. I think I would just kind of become a digital nomad, like a vagabond. You know, six months here, six months there, six months here, three months there. I'd travel the world probably, to be honest with you. Um, probably change my name to throw off uh, the background checks and then try to get a job as like a baseball coach, like teaching people to play baseball in Sudan or something like that. That would probably be what I would do. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Uncircumcised Circus says if Elon gives up, he's moving to like Albania or Montenegro. Okay. Well, I mean, he, he, he has a weird um, – the things that people don't talk about Elon enough is that – and it makes sense for him as, like, an, an, an engineer and somebody that, like, spends his entire life, like, trying to perfect things and, and work in efficiency models. He has a little bit of a eugenicist in him. He definitely wants – very big, very strong children with very big, very strong women. So I think, I think he might be like, you know, Chinggis Khan, and like I can see Elon, just like paying women to. I, we might end up hearing that he pays women to like inseminate them, and like one woman a day gets a million dollars, and you know he, he gets all of these, you know, he's gonna walk around with like you know. 50,000, 60,000 children or something like that, all of, like, Eastern European heritage. I, I would not be surprised. If you, Lucy Zobia, if you're seeing this, you know, you beautiful, gorgeous Czech goddess, you, 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 get, you get you some of that Elon Musk sperm. And, you know, you deserve it. <laughs> you get you. You get you that pension, girl. If you're going to get knocked up by anybody, that's, that's, that's who you deserve. Go ahead. All right, so um, Luke himself says the rigging is ridiculous. We probably all agree. Oh yeah, yeah come um. on! Like, it, like you'd have to, you have the, the cognitive dissonance you have to have to believe that they would lie about COVID, Vietnam, JFK, the war on Iraq. They would lie about Operation Northwoods. They would lie about Operation Mockingbird. They would lie about Operation. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, MK Ultra, that they would rig elections everywhere else on earth, but not do it here. And they would tell the truth about this. You, the cognitive dissonance you would need, it, <laughs> uh, you, you'd, you'd have to, like, it, it's the equivalent of, like, you know, I, I don't even know. It, it's like the woman that lets the guy cheat 50 times and just, like, okay, well, I believe you. Like, it's insane. Like, you're just beaten down. You've been gaslit to death. Like you, you deep down inside know it's not true, but life's just easier if you go along with it. That's really what's happening right now. There's no way you believe in election integrity. Anymore. It's what's cool. It's the rhetoric. You just can't. You just don't believe there. I just don't believe that the people are out there truly, honestly believe that the system is not rigged. They just. It's easier for them to go along with the lie than it is for them to admit the truth. It's easier to take. You know. The, to use the cliche, it's easier to take the blue pill and just, you know, is it really a stake? Does it, do I, do I care? There's people in my family that are like that. Like Gerard, I, I don't want to know. 
I, if you're right, that's worse. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if I admit you're right, that's worse because I can't change it. And then they have this anxiety and this stress. I understand that. I get that. But at least those people are quiet. It's the people who know it's wrong but gaslight you to death on behalf of the machine because they, I think they think that that'll somehow save them. They don't know history very well. The useful idiots are the first to go. All right, so uh, Raul says, uh, do you think there are people above Soros, Gates, and Rothschilds who are pulling the strings? Yes, people I, we've never heard of? Yeah, I do, 100%. There's people that we don't know. Um, but there's also people that we're just not considering that we do know. Like, apparently, uh, General Milley uh, has way more influence on what's going on in D.C. than anybody cares to admit. General Milley has been remarkably active behind the scenes, uh, communicating with Nancy Pelosi and doing everything that he can to, you know, um, to, to, to sabotage, frankly, Trump, who he worked for. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people. There's a lot that we just don't know. And I want to get some people on. I've been in contact with some people that are going to help. I've been trying desperately to get Mike Bence on, but I'm just not cool enough for him. Why is this in frame the whole time? Nobody told me. Um, trying to get Mike Bence on. Was that, all, was that in frame on TV yesterday? I hope not. Um, trying, to, trying to get people on that know more than I do. And I'm trying desperately to find out who behind the scenes. Apparently, believe it or not, Prince Charles has a lot of influence, which, which shocked me. Um, Xi Jinping, the entire transgender movement in America goes back to two Chinese billionaires, I believe Jack Ma being one of them. There's a lot of people that we don't know. Uh, more than Bill Gates, his ex-wife is insanely influential with the amount of money she throws out to these crazy left-wing programs, especially climate crisis programs. So there's a ton. But it's not when I say there's a ton, it's like 250 people that are really kind of in this Politburo, this inner, this inner circle of deck of millionaires and billionaires that are that are running these these action fronts that are you know they, and and to be honest they're just done with democracy they just don't want you to have a voice they're rich they're smart you're poor you're dumb why shouldn't they run things that's the extent of their worldview anything beyond that you're overthinking it go ahead Skyler. put what? up shut up and stand up says uh great show gerard rocks Thank you, Don. Appreciate you, brother. You're the man. Thank you. And without you, we could have yeah. never gotten to 100,000. You're the man, Don. Love you. SC Hoffman says the black CIA assets coming out of the woodwork for election year. Oh, now that now we're talking. Now we're talking. Activate John Legend. Activate. Oh, I guess P. Diddy's got going to have to sit this one out. I guess Rock the Vote Diddy's going to have to sit this one out. Oh, now, now, now we're starting to think. Now we're starting to think. Love that. Luke himself says, remember when we were taught that rigged elections is a third world problem that we fixed decades ago? Yeah. One of my favorite quotes going around right now is that uh, somebody who just traveled America, New York specifically, and they said that uh, America is a third world country in a Gucci belt. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, man. We have allowed what we have allowed to happen. Look, but you know, maybe we had to go through it, guys. They weaponized our empathy. They took the best parts of us and used it against us. We've heard the parables, you know, don't take kindness for a week. Is, we, we've heard this. But until you live through it, the unfortunate truth is that you have to go through these times. They have to harden you a little bit because you hear somebody crying and you, you want them to stop crying. Like, oh, I'm sorry. What's going to get you to stop crying? Can I give you money? Can I give you power? Can I give you influence? What can I give you to stop crying? I want, I want to help you. Please stop crying. But then you keep giving and giving and giving. But then they start crying louder because that's how they get. The only way they get is to cry. You haven't stopped the crying. You have enabled more crying. Fair enough. Lesson learned. Now, if you're crying, cry. Cry till you die. I don't care. Enough's enough. Sorry, enough's enough. We got to get this thing back on track for everybody, not just you. I know, I know you're the only person that matters. I know. I know the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters in America is are black people happy? I know that. I know that. I'm aware of that. So I know in 2024, the only thing anybody can think about is does this make black people happy? 
And that is the center of all decisions. But unfortunately, just, just for one election, please, if you'll allow us, just for one election, we'd like to think about everybody, all 330 million Americans. We'd like to kind of get the economy straight. We'd like to, you know, stop presenting domestic violence as competitive athletics. We'd like to, you know, stop having, you know, just remarkably and overtly corrupt proxy wars all across the globe. I know, I know none of that's important. And what really just matters is do black people feel powerful? And I get that. And we'll get back to that, I promise you. If you just give us this one election, I promise you we'll get back to getting on our knees and making sure that black people are the happiest people on earth every moment of every day. But just for this one election, guys, just for this one, well, I think we have to think about all 330 million Americans. I'm sorry. I know. I know it sounds crazy. I know. I know. I know. But, you know, we'll get back to you allowing the communists to Trojan horse their extremist global takeover behind black pain in, in four years. All right? I, I, we'll, we'll get back to that. All right? Just, we just need this one to not completely crumble. Is that okay? I'm sure it's not okay. I'm sure. I, you know what? Let me just apologize. Uh, you know, Christian, I didn't ask your permission to say that. So if people can can let Christian Divine know that I am I, I'm sorry for even suggesting that. That's my fault. I, you know what? Forget everything I said. Forget every. Let's just forget everything I said. Just give Kamala all our money, and that let's. Just, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I'm sorry. This Skylar, read the rest of the comments, and let's close this out. I. I need to reflect and repent. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, so S.C. Hoffman says, notice how these Democrats talk down to their own and kick you off the quote unquote plantation for disagreeing. That's it. It's a union. It's a, it, that's you're a scab. It's heresy. You're either in the you're either in the cult or you're an enemy of the cult. There is no other options. Jake says 2016, the election was rigged. 2020, it's impossible to rig an election, you racist. <laughs> I, I believe you. You know what? I'm right, and I'm learning, and I'm growing. Uh, this is a teaching moment for me. Thank you, Jake. Luke himself, steak. My brain tells me this is a juicy, delicious steak. Luke himself also. Any real crisis or pandemic doesn't need advertising or marketing. <clears throat> Pfizer. 100%. Cypher gets it. Cypher gets it 100%. You know, I knew, I knew that there was something wrong with the pandemic the second the homeless weren't just piling up in the streets. I'm like, those people are doing the opposite of everything we're being told to do. And they seem to be doing, they, they seem to be thriving. I don't think this is what they're telling us it is. Any other comments, Skylar? Yeah, Brett says, um, well, actually, let's go with Raul. Uh, as of now, everybody, um, Excuse me. As of now, everybody's hope is Trump. But what happens if um, after four years? Let's worry about that when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these next 90 days are going to be remarkably historic. Let's see what happens. And I, I think I think they're going to rig it. I really do. I, I, I don't see. I just can't see any way the deep state would allow themselves the liability of giving up power. They, they've committed crimes against humanity. You know, they, they, they've, they've committed treason. The things that they've done, you know, they're not just going to lose their jobs. They, they can lose their freedom. Like, they're not going to let that happen. They didn't come this far to just be like, well, hey, fair play, good game. You know, you guys, you guys won fair and square. I just don't see it. I just do not see it. Um, you know, I know that that sounds like a black pill type of thing, but I just, I do not see it. They, they, guys, just use logic. They wouldn't let their own people vote for Kamala. They wouldn't allow their own people who they know are on their side. They wouldn't trust Democrats to vote. You think they're going to trust an election with hundreds of millions of people who are adversarial to them? Uh, I don't see it. They'd rig their own elections, but then leave the general up to chance? 
Yeah, I, I don't. I, that, that logic, that logic don't track. That dog don't hunt. No, I don't. Why go through all this? Why go through all this just to leave? Leave it to chance. There's no way. Nah. I. I'm sorry. I hate to be that guy. I hate to be black pilled. But I, I will believe it when I see it. We got to wrap this up soon. So Skylar, just. I'm not answering any of them. Just run through the last comments, and then let's let's say uh, happy weekend to everybody. All right, so Uncircumcised Circus says King Charles is the descendant of Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, he's proud of that. Jake says Luke himself nails it. Luke himself says, yeah, that's a dark road, my friend, in agreement to you. Um, Jake says, good show, guys. Pay Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> well, 50-50. We'll see. Luke himself says, W show. Jake says, rigged. Bernie, but would never rig Trump. Exactly right. <clears throat> yeah, they'll, they'll rig it. <laughs> they'll, they'll rig Bernie, but no, no, no. We'll we'll let we'll play it. We'll play it fair and square for Donald. <laughs> Get the, you'd have to, man. You 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 got to be a glowy to believe that. Jake says W show. Luke himself says, uh, quote unquote, black pilled. That's racist. <clears throat> uh, Raul. But it's the best pill. We all agree. Mm. It's the best pill, and it deserves the most. We can all agree. And uh, Raul Minon, hopefully I pronounced that right, says, great insights by Gerard. I Appreciate agree. you guys. Love you guys. Skyler, give you a lot of shit. But you did a great job today. Thank you so much, Peace out, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. If you liked today's show, it means a lot. If you go to tellyrx.com and use code SNT for all of your medical and prescription needs, check out tellyrx.com for all your telehealth needs. Use code SNT and shoot them. Uh, 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 an email and say that, hey, Gerard sent me there. It would be great if you did, all right? You guys are the best. Check on Instagram, X, Facebook, and YouTube. You guys have a great weekend. We will see you next time. Everyone's a fuck!